The most common mistake I see kids make is coloring too fast. Remember, there is no rush. Slow down, take your time, and think about what you're doing. Even if it's close to the end of class and we're wrapping things up, it's better to come back and finish coloring it later than it is to rush and mess it up and make it look messy. Now, if you should happen to color too fast, um, also known as scribbling, um, what I'm going to tell you to do is to go back and fill it in. And right now you see me doing that on my video. I am outlining it. And then I'm going to go back in and I'm going to color on top of it to cover up where I colored too fast. I'm going to color in one direction and my goal is to basically cover it up as much as I can and cover up those white spaces. That's why the coloring too fast doesn't work and turns into scribbling because you have all those random white spaces everywhere. And then you can see it really does make a difference. It's not perfect, but it's certainly better than it was. The second most common mistake I see is coloring in too many directions. Now this mistake is a little different than coloring too fast and scribbling because this time the person is honestly trying. Um, they may not be giving 100% of their best work, but they're giving maybe 70, 75. So they're, they're putting an honest effort in. Uh, you can see I started out by outlining it, which is good. That's what you want to do. But here's where it goes wrong, is when you color in too many different directions. You can see I'm coloring diagonally, and then I'm coloring side to side, and then I'm gonna color up and down, and then I change my mind again, and let's see, I'm gonna go side to side, and basically you're just doing a gazillion different directions. And when you're finished, you're gonna have more white spaces than you wanna have, and it's going to look too messy. So even though you put more effort in than the scribbler did, it still doesn't look 100% its best. Now, if you should happen to make this mistake, you wanna take your crayon or whatever you're coloring with and go back over it and try to fill in any white spaces that happen to be there. Then it's, you know, it's not perfect, but you could try to kind of redeem this coloring job. Okay, now I call this mistake the hole in the universe. And this one's a little different because most of the time it starts out as a really good drawing. You can see here I made an example where you have a person and a house and a couple of trees and a flower and the sun, etc. But where it goes wrong is when they're coloring the sky. And as you can see here, they color a blue line at the top and then a green line at the bottom, which is supposed to be the grass. But then they just leave a hole in the middle. Like, if you look out the window, there's just this hole in the universe, and there's not, thank goodness. Instead, you want to bring that sky all the way down to the ground. Where the sky and the ground meet is called a horizon line. And so you can see here, I'm drawing my horizon line, going all the way across behind all my objects. And so the grass is gonna go all the way up to the horizon line. Even though it's kind of behind our people and our house and our flowers and it goes up a little higher than you might expect, that is actually how you see space in the distance. And then your sky is going to come all the way down to the ground. There is no hole at all. Thank goodness. <laughs> Imagine if there was a hole in the universe, if you looked outside and there's just a big gaping white hole, that would be a little frightening, a little disturbing. So your sky goes all the way to the ground and that is a more correct picture than the one with the poor hole. All right, so now we're gonna talk about the do's in coloring, meaning the things that are correct. And if you're coloring with crayon only, you most of the time are gonna outline whatever it is you're coloring. So you can see here, I'm taking my crayon and I am outlining my box. And of course I'm trying to do it neatly and give it my best effort. And I'm using a darker purple to outline it, okay? 
then I'm gonna color the inside of it with another crayon. Now I could use the same crayon, but I am choosing to try to make it a little more interesting and a little bit different. And so I'm using a lighter purple to color the inside. And when I color, I'm gonna choose one direction. And here you can see the direction I chose is diagonal, meaning I'm kind of going from corner to corner. Okay. Now, unlike the one where I colored in too many directions, I'm just sticking with that one direction. And I'm gonna color that entire box diagonally. And I'm trying to color it evenly. I'm trying to color it nicely. I'm not coloring too fast. I'm not leaving a bunch of white space. I'm not doing some places dark and some places light. I'm trying to keep it all even and the same. And you can see there, it turns out pretty nice. So that's coloring with crayon only. All right, now let's talk about coloring with marker only. Same concept. I have my markers ready. I am going to outline my box, just like I did when I colored it with crayon. Obviously, I'm using different colors here. I chose to switch to a green. I'm outlining it with a darker green. And then I'm gonna color it in with a lighter green marker. Now again, I could use the same marker to color it in if I wanted, but I just feel when you use a darker one or a different one to outline it from what you're coloring it in with, it just gives it a little more interest. It makes it pop a little more, which means you see it and you notice it. So you can see here, I'm beginning to color it with the lighter green marker. And again, I'm choosing one direction. I chose diagonally again, because for me, that's what's comfortable when I'm coloring. For you, choose what works for you. It could be diagonal also. It could be diagonal going in a different direction. I am left-handed, so starting in that top right corner is more comfortable for me. If you are right-handed, starting in the top left corner might be more comfortable for you. It might be more comfortable for you to go side to side. It might be more comfortable for you to go up and down. These are decisions that you have to make. Also, sometimes you just decide to change it to make it more interesting because coloring everything in the same direction could get pretty boring. So it's good to, you know, mix it up a little, change it up. And sometimes, depending on what it is you're coloring, that may decide what direction you're going. For example, if I was coloring a circle or a ball, I would probably want to go in a round rotating motion, meaning round and round. So that way it's more appropriate. Now, if you want to use crayon and marker, that is also a choice. And that happens to be my personal favorite. I like to outline things with marker and then color it in with crayon. I feel like the marker really makes the shapes and the lines pop. Again, that means it makes them stand out, it makes them noticeable, it makes them bold. And then I like to color it in with crayons. I feel like with crayons, you have a little more control with how the texture looks. Remember, texture is how something feels. Rough, smooth, bumpy. And keep in mind with crayon, you're not really going to be able to feel these textures. It's just creating the illusion of texture. That's called invented texture. But anyway, I just feel like when you color things in with crayon, you have a little more control and it looks a little nicer. Um, but that again is just my personal opinion. But for anyone, this is an option to outline it with marker, color it in with crayon, and uh, you can match the colors. You can make different colors. You could do darker and lighter. You could do the opposite. For example, here I kind of outlined it with a bluish turquoise. I could have colored it in with a um, kind of orangey color. Um, it's Again, it's completely up to you. Just be sure you choose one direction. You do it neatly and you do it nicely. Always give it your best effort, 100%.